Hey there, friends. I was just over here at my brother's house. He went on vacation, and so I was, uh, you know, house-sitting for him, and I'm supposed to be taking care of his garden and taking care of his cats and stuff. And what I found when I came over here was this tomato plant. And um, the leaves on it, on its old growth, looks fine. But then at the top, you can tell its stems and leaves are all distorted looking. Um, and he just told me the other day, you know, several days ago, I think it was last week, um, when I saw him, that he didn't think his plants were doing very well because they weren't getting enough sun. And I was like, hmm, you know, maybe. But he just built this garden bed this year, probably several weeks ago, and he just had it filled with this soil. And I didn't think that it was, you know, that shady of a location. I mean, here in the early morning, it gets shade from a tree. But then, you know, as soon as the sun starts to come up a little higher, it's pretty well full sun all day. So I didn't think it could be that. But I just kind of, you know, didn't think much of it. Until I came over today and I see the way that the plant is actually growing. And this is a classic case of what's called killer compost. Um, Basically what killer compost is, is compost that ends up with herbicides in it. And then you put it in your garden and you try to grow with it and you think you're doing a good job, you know, doing what you're supposed to do. Um, adding nutrients and organic matter to your garden, but then your plants end up worse than they were before or having really a lot of trouble growing. Um, you know, end up with distorted growth or really slow growing or sometimes even die. So um, basically how the herbicides get there is a number of ways. Um, if it's like uh, compost that someone has made from a dairy farm or something like that, oftentimes there'll be bedding mixed in with the manure. Um, if it is just manure, it can get in that way. In the bedding, you would basically when it was growing, um, they would put herbicide on the plants, you know, whatever it was, the hay, the grass, whatever it was that they were going to use as bedding, and that herbicide then goes to the bedding where the animals are, um, and then they scoop it all out after the animals have soiled it, and then they compost it, but it still has those residues from those herbicides. Sometimes it can, you know, happen when um, an animal eats plants that have had herbicide sprayed on them, and it can actually go through the digestive tract and out and still persist in their um, leavings. And so when you compost that animal manure, you can still end up with, um, you know, those herbicides and end up with a killer compost. And there's a number of other ways. I mean, even if you were making compost at home, if you're putting weed and feed on your grass, you know, and then you wa you're watering it in or the rain or whatever, um, and then the, you have a tree around in that area, it can suck up it, um, that weed, that herbicide from the weed and feed and then it'll get in the leaves, then the leaves fall, you add the leaves to your home compost, now you've got it there. Or the grass trimmings, if you put the weed and feed on your grass, and then you mow, you know, the grass has that herbicide in it, even if it's been watered very well, it's not, you know, necessarily um, from it being on the top, it actually gets into the water and then it goes into the plants, so it's actually inside. Then you compost those grass clippings and next thing you know there's herbicide there too so killer compost is actually a pretty widespread problem and it's really become even more of a problem here recently especially for organic gardeners who really need to you know be adding organic matter to their um, you know their home um, raised garden beds or their in-ground boxes etc and so um, it's it's really a shame i really wish that our agricultural practices weren't this destructive um, but they are so but there's a number of ways that you can protect yourself from it and the first one is to know where your compost comes from if it's not from a trusted source and you haven't you know thoroughly investigated whether or not they organically garden I wouldn't use it and if you don't have anyone um, who's able to give you compost and you wanted to try and buy some there's a number of ways that you can check it before you buy it um, what I do is I take two pots and then I fill one with just uh, potting soil. And then the other pot I fill 50-50 with potting soil and a sample of the compost that I want to use in my garden. And then I plant some seeds in it, something that sprouts really quickly and easily, something like a bean seed or something like that. And then I plant seeds in both of them and then you put them both in the same area with the same amount of water, the same amount of light, etc. And then when you see 
you know, if the one with the potting soil sprouts really quickly but the other one doesn't, then you know that there's something in that compost that's keeping them from sprouting, you know, germinating and growing. Or if they do sprout, but then the one with the potting soil has big leaves, but the other one has these shriveled, distorted leaves, that's, you know, a sign that there's something in that compost that you're not going to want in there too. Um, and sometimes this isn't always effective if you're buying it through, say, a big company. If you're buying it through like a big um, landscape company who sells stuff by the yard and whatnot, you can go over there and get a, you know a nice little sample of the compost. But then, you know, and you test it out, and two to four weeks later, you've you know gotten the go ahead that hey, you know, it sprouted and germinated fine. The stuff that you would actually buy later on might be a different um, load of it. It might be, you know, from a different dairy or whatever that they use different composts from or whatnot. And so it could be, you know that it isn't the same. Um, if you did it from, say, a bag of compost, like say you bought some from a big box store and you brought it home and you took a handful of it, then you know it's the same batch. And you know you don't have to worry about that. So um, kind of use, you know, um, common sense if you can on that. But that is the most effective way that I have found to testing it. And it's much easier, even though this seems tedious, to, to take a sample of it and to try it out before you put it in your garden. Think of how much more tedious it would be to already have added it to your yard and having it, you know, hurt your plants and then realize that, you know, you've already mixed it in the soil. What are you going to do now? You know, you can't take it back out, but you can test it thoroughly before you put it in. And I highly recommend that because, you know, as hard as you try, you know, to make sure that you're getting it from a reputable company or whatever. I mean, that's what he said with this because he didn't really think about you know, what he was going to get before he needed it. And then when it came down to it, he needed it now, he didn't have time to test it and so on. Um, but, you know, he got a planter's mix that was, you know, 50 per, or 60% topsoil, 40% compost, and this compost is obviously not good. He planted his plants in here, and all the old growth on this tomato is all nice and really good looking here in a second I'm going to show you this and you're going to see it it's just a classic case of killer compost that he has here and it's just so unfortunate um, the two signs uh, that you can really tell is that the leaves are shriveled and the stems are distorted that is um, you know a clear sign that your plants have been exposed to an herbicide so um, yeah I think that's all I have to say about it there let me show it to you I don't know if you can see that, but here it is with the leaves. All these leaves are nice and broad, but then when you come into the newest growth, just look at that. Do you see how it's all shriveled and none of the leaves are popping out? They just and then all the little stems are just distorted. I mean, this poor little tomato should not look like this. This is not normal for a tomato, so yep. Help keep killer compost out of your garden. Make your own compost if you know that you're not using chemicals and make sure you test compost before you put it in. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions of course feel free to ask. Thanks!